Hi there, and welcome to another uh, lesson that I'm going to be teaching you guys today. Um, this is, I'm going to be playing a game, and I'm going to be explaining my, basically talking through my thought process to try and help you understand. Uh, with me again is uh, Fiona or Fifi. Hopefully she doesn't make too much of a noise. But um, this game I hopefully will teach you how to think, basically, in a new game. Um, it's gonna... Because every single time that you make a move, or every time your character makes a move, you're gonna want to um, ask yourself three questions. These questions are... One. Well, if I move a certain piece, what am I leaving behind? Where am I going? And and stuff like that. Let me show you. It's going to be a lot easier. Okay, soon the game will start. I'm choosing black this time. Okay, so, uh, White has opened up with the normal Queen's Pawn. So, he's going, if you, normally if you play a Queen's Pawn, you're going to have a more open game. Whereas, if you play the King's Pawn, it's got to be more close, normally when the Knights get in. Um, so my thought process is, what has he done? He's moved his pawns forward. What's he attacking? Nothing right now. What's he left behind? Nothing. So it's okay for me to make my move. The normal reply to this is c5. I think he's going to do c4. Yeah. The reason why I thought he was going to do that is because this is the Queen's Gambit opening. Now, um, his move, he's now attacking my pawn. He's left behind that square, and he's also opened up for the queen to come out here and give check. Of course, this is the queen's gambit. He's given up a pawn for the queen to come out, give check, and retake the pawn. Standard opening, the queen's gambit declined. I left, up, I left behind the square. My bishop has now got more power, and it's protected the pawn. He's brought out his knight. What's he left behind? The square that he came perform. He's not made anything vulnerable. He's protecting his pawn and he's not attacking me at any rate. So I'm okay to make my move. Um, okay. Normally with a queen's gambit like this, they're going to make this right uh, diagonal um, dangerous. So it's going to be important I try and get my knight to this square and try and stop him getting his knight to this black square. So I'm going to bring my knight out to here. Because this protects that square. If the knight comes here, I already exchange. He brings his pawn forward and his pawns are isolated and he has double pawns. Okay, so he's brought the pawn forward. That tells me he's going to do a Fianchetto opening. And he's going to plan on castling kingside. He's left behind that square. He's not attacking anything. I'm not at threat, so I'm okay to make go ahead with my move. So I'm going to put my knight here, so I can try and get my knight onto that e4 square. Knights in the center of the board are extremely strong, just by all the squares that they can control. I suspect he's going to move his bishop out. There we go.
Okay, so this is a, a pretty standard game, a pretty standard opening. Now, I can... I mean, my bishop is in a bad position right now because it's blocked in. It's not going to do much. I can bring my bishop to d6 in front of my knight. He's more likely just going to push the pawn on and attack my bishop again, making me have to move. I could, however, give check. He could put his bishop in front of his queen. He could put the knight in front. He could even put the queen in front of his queen, but he's not likely to do that. Or he could just move the king. Or he could put the knight here in front of the king as well to block the check. So let's see what he does. So I've left behind the square, nothing. I've not left anything hanging. My opponent cannot take anything except for this pawn, but it's protected twice. And now, because he's in check, he cannot castle. But I would be able to castle the next move if I wanted to. Okay, he's moved his bishop. He's left behind nothing. Okay, so I'm back again. Okay, so we left off with White putting his bishop in front of his king to block the check. I could take, and if he did, his queen or knight or the other knight could take back, which is more likely he's going to use his queen's knight to take back. I'm thinking if I put my queen then in front of the king, he could take my bishop, I would take back, I would give check, he again would have to respond either with queen or knight. If he responds with knight, I can take the pawn on b2. He's more likely to put the queen in front to threaten a check, uh, swap of queen. If that happens, then I can take the pawn on c4. I don't know if you can get a uh, picture of this in your head. So I'm thinking queen there. Bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop, check. Queen comes forward, queen takes pawn c4. And then after that, he'll probably push his pawn to, um, to b3 and attack my queen. So that's my thought process. Welcome back, Gigi. Okay, so he's taking the bait. I'm going to turn up the sound a little bit. It's kind of weird without any sound. Okay. Okay. Also. There you go, I'll put the letters and numbers up for you. Okay, so he... He's taken back the bishop. He's left behind the square that he was on. And he's open to be taken. So, queen takes bishop.
No, I anticipate the pawn will come up with that point. Okay, no. Okay, so he's pushed the queen in front. He's not left behind anything. He's uh, now attacking my queen. My queen is protected by the pawn. <laughs> I'm thinking if there is anything else I can do. I can push the queen back to a6 or b5. I could attack the queen, but then the knight will come out, and I'll be doing him a favor. Yeah. <clears throat> ha. I could put the knight to the center, and then I would attack the queen and f2. Queen would take queen, pawn would take back, and then my knight would be stuck in the middle without any protection. And after the queen exchange, all that would happen is the knight would come out to c3 trying to push my knight away. I'm going to take the opportunity to castle. <laughs> He'll probably take my queen, and I'll take back. Okay, so he's chosen to not take the queen, but push the pawn on instead. Because if I move my queen, she can come and take c7, which is unprotected. Okay, so let's try and force these. Two. I'm going to put my knight to here to protect the queen. So once he exchanges queen, my knight can take the queen instead of the pawn. Okay. I don't know why he's done that instead of castling. He's pushed the pawn forward. He's made his king side extremely weak. He's not attacking anything. He's threatening to come up forward. So he's made it clear he doesn't want to take queen. So I'm going to threaten his queen and make him decide once and for all. Okay, so finally he's taken the queen.
he's taking my queen, I could take back the pawn. But then my knight would be stuck in the middle without any protection. So I'm going to take back with my knight. Seen that one before. <laughs> and there we go. Okay, so he's attacking my knight on at C4 with his knight. Both my knights are in the center of the board, looking very, very strong. Now if knight takes knight, pawn takes back, and bishop takes my other knight, and I would be a piece down. He still has not castled. And I am a pawn up. He has a bishop and a queen. I have a queen, a bishop, and a, a pawn. So I'm up by one pawn. Okay, so I'm gonna have to take back the knight. And now it's my move. Okay, so after all of that, my knight's in the middle with a dominating position of the center of the board. Because it's attacking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go ahead. His pawn can now lo no longer go anywhere. His bishop is attacking my knight, and he still hasn't castled yet. Okay, so it's time for me to get my bishop active. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's probably a good move, but... Okay, 
Okay, so he had to do that really because my knight in the center of the board was way too strong. However, now his king side is completely wide open and his king stuck in the middle. Okay, now it's his turn. The only bad thing about this is now I have double pawns. Two pawns on the same file. Now normally they're bad, but if they can get up together, further up, then they can turn into a troublesome... Okay, so now I'm going to get my walk into play, because that's an open file. So my book is going to be extremely strong on that file. And because this is a more open game now, my bishop is going to be way more stronger than his knight. So if I put my bishop there, I'm now threatening checkmate on d1 with my rook. My bishop is covering that square so he has to move okay he's pushed the knight out to attack the bishop to protect that d1 square with the rook and knight now and he's also attacking my pawn so let's go back My next move, okay, maybe not now. The reason why he did that is because he saw that I'm going to push my pawn forward and expose an attack on his rook while threatening the pawn. So this is turning into a, a nitty gritty game. Now I can push my pawn for two, and then if he wanted, he could do en passant. But this is keeping my pawn protected. This is okay because I'm a pawn ahead, so if I keep popping off the pawn, eventually he's gonna run out. Okay, so now... I'm taking back. So now my book on barely two open aisles. He has two pawns on this side while I have three. And I have uh, four on this well, even though they're together. Let's 
to retake out the top book star. It could just push the pawn up. Okay, so if you're a pawn ahead, you want to try and swap the pawns and get the pieces out. So you can use that one pawn advantage. Yeah. But I think it's. Let's see what it is now. I have two of his bishops, he has two of my knights. I have one of his bishops, he has one of my knight bishops, I have one of his knights. So everything's all equal right now. He came back. So look. Okay. Now he has the same problem that I have of double pawns. Okay, now again it's time to take a look at the board. Everything's pretty equal. He has two isolated pawns doubled up. He has a knight, I have a bishop. Things are pretty equal right now. So it's time I start getting my king into the game. Now, before yeah. you do, you have to think of ha. which side you want the king on, and then you've got to stick on it. Now, this side is pretty weak compared to this side, so I'm going to keep my king with these pawns if I can. So, let's see what we can do. I can push the pawn up to attack that pawn. I can push this point up to block it, that one's advance. Yeah. I'm going to push this point up. If he pushes the point on to tap my bishop, I can go behind. Yes. So like I thought. And then if he pushes that point on forward, I can ignore it. So he pushes this pawn forward again. Okay, I'm gonna put my mm. king here. He has no bishop, so that's gonna help me a lot. Push 
pushing that up. Might as well. Well, I could. If now yeah. he's trying to exchange no. Oh. Now, I want to know if I want to. If I take his walk, it's check. He has to take back with his knight, giving me another move. I have my knight, I mean, I have my bishop against his knight. And because it's in the end game, my bishop should win. I should have more tactical advantage over him than his knight. All of his pawns are on white colored squares except for one right now, which is also key. I'm gonna get strong. with his knight and then I just saw before we move that I can put the bishop so I'm attacking his knight and his pawn then I would win a pawn it may not sound like much but in the end game every pawn counts no no I can't because there's another pawn there I thought this I forgot this pawn was on e2 Because it's impossible to make king and knight and king and bishop. So it's coming down to the final nitty gritty battle. Yeah. Ha. Okay, now it's time for me to win a pawn. gonna do okay what he's doing is one attack my pawn in the middle now you gotta watch knights because they can be really tricky king takes pawn knight takes pawn check King takes the second pawn. The knight that will be here can go here, here, yeah, or here. Ha! I really don't see the point of that. I get two pawns for the one. And now you can also yeah. oh. ha. If I push the pawn forward It could bring his knight to there anyway Protecting that pawn Okay, I'm gonna do this Because I don't really see any threat at all So he didn't take the pawn. So 
That could be a bad move on his part. Because now I have a clear path all the way to H1. That square H1 is protected by my bishop. So I now have two pawns. Careful, these pawns. Make sure they don't get too far ahead. Yeah. Ha. You see how the role of the king changed throughout the entire game. He sat behind the defense. And now that it's uh, in the end game, the king becomes as important as a queen. Okay, so now I'm gonna push my pawn up. I don't see anything stopping this pawn getting up there. His king has to do something now. Okay, his king just went the entirely wrong way. Nothing is gonna stop my pawn from getting there. Now, if I push my pawn up, he could put his king next to my pawn and capture it. I can't capture this pawn because it's protected by the knight. Yeah. So I've got to get my king there. Ha. King back because he had me in check. Okay, so now he's attacking the pawn. Knight. If the pawn goes up one, the light king comes to this black square. The king goes to that square, I'm going to this white square. He takes my pawn. <coughs> Yes, I'm going to do this. Okay, so what's going to happen? Right now he's threatening my pawn. Pawn goes up. King comes to g3. King goes to e4. King takes pawn. King takes pawn here. He has to move his knight. And I take the other pawn. Or, if he does anything else, I can go bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, king takes pawn. And I'll have these three pawns to his two pawns. And I'll have the extra one on the other side. Unless, of course, he doesn't. Mm. 
So now, he didn't put the king there. He's got me in check. If I put my king there, his knight can only go here, 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 here. He can't take his own pawn or there. And I'll get me in check again. Yeah. The pawn can advance. Ha. So king goes there. Okay, this is the point in games where you either lose, draw, or win. What happens if I push that pawn forward to h2, the knight would take yeah. and give check. But I have a bishop. Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes bishop, gives check. King goes to here. The king cannot go anywhere near the pawn. Okay. Okay. I'm now in check. Yeah. Ha. Now I've got to think about this because. If my king gets stuck on the side, those pawns can get to being queen before my pawn can get anywhere near. I'm gonna be safe because if king goes to h4, his only move is pushing one of these pawns up. If I go to h2, its king can immediately go to g2 then, and I can't protect the pawn anymore. So I'm gonna be safe. It's all about the right moves here. And now king forward. Now this is odd, but yeah. if I take that pawn. I'm always going to be a move behind and he can just become a queen. So I'm not going to fall for it.
Should have pushed the other pawn forward. So I didn't explain my move for that, but I was. I instantly saw that was a mistake, and I didn't want to mess it up. makes a whole lot of difference. Because now he's lost. My king can kill those other two blue pawns on the other side before he even gets over to there. It's game over. the end of his threat. Okay, I don't know what happened to the camera there. Okay, now it's his move. Now let's see if I can... Do something about it. Yeah, that's bad. Oh well. Let's go kill his bones before he even gets a chance. Basically, in the end game, it's all about changing the mood. Because you've got to be exact, otherwise you can mess up. I knew those two pawns would get to the end of the board before I could get the pawn, my pawn, to the end. Because he could have just blocked it. As soon as he pushed that pawn forward, I could take it. He should have pushed this e-pawn forward first. Now, my king has less further to go to get his pawns. Since his king is stuck on the other side of the board before he gets anywhere near mine. It's all over. I don't know why they don't allow the computer to resign. In the end, this game came down to being just a numbers game. I was a point ahead, he came back, and I just <clears throat> took care of that advantage. And that game should have been a joy, except he pushed that pawn forward at the end. He made a mistake. And that's lucky for me. <clears throat> But extremely unlucky for him. <laughs> okay, so now I'm three pawns up. It's game over. Mm. 
making sure he can kind of get over to stop the pawns. But I don't think he's even trying. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Sometimes it's about wasting the move than it is. Because now he's going to get there before these pawns. And now he has to move. These pawns will come forward and just check. One, team goes to there. Pawn up, goes to there. Pawn up, and go back. He's going to try and make you stalemate him. Careful now. Check. And now he takes the pawn. And I got myself a queen. But this time, I think I'm gonna go for work. So I can play a king and work me. Tactics, my friend. Yeah. Now he can do whatever he wants. Ha. It's not gonna bother me. I'm gonna choose a work. Uh, no matter what, he cannot get off this file. Good. Hopefully he makes it short. King down. Now if he pushes his king up to a3, it's checkmate. And he's been <laughs> See, no matter what he does, like, okay. I don't care. Now my own pawn's in the way. That's a cause of problem. That's his move. Ugh. Typical. My own pawn got in the way. Probably doesn't make me have to do this all the way. It's gonna get very tedious. Ah, yes, he is. He's going up to the If he goes up, I'm gonna just bring the rook down.
because he can't. I don't care what you do. You're not gonna get out of this checkmate. Make it so the kings are opposite each other. Okay, just be nice. <laughs> I don't want to give up. It's good. I mean, it, the game makes you check. Me. <laughs> Let's stop him from going back, shall we? No, he can't go back to A2. He has to go to A4, and I can get checkmate. Check and mate. Because he can't go back to the other. Okay, so that's it. Now, hopefully, you heard me think and feel my moves and explain anything. Um, hopefully, you understand as you went along with this game. And you saw how towards the end game it becomes a very nitty gritty one mistake destroys all kind of thing. Hmm. And that's how it can be a very tense game. I hope you join me for the next level, for the next uh, video lesson. Have fun all.